Welcome to this seminar series on sewer and pipeline engineering. My name is Bert Bossler and I am the scientific director of the IKT Institute for Underground Infrastructure. And in this seminar session we want to look at the rehabilitation of sewers and pipelines. And very specifically, this time we are talking about replacement methods. And we want to proceed in three steps. First, we want to better understand the term replacement and also take a look at the standards. Then we will look at the construction methods and techniques, which groups can be distinguished. And finally, we take a closer look at a specific construction method, which is the pipe bursting method. But first, let's start with the terminology. What is meant by replacement and how does a replacement differ from other rehabilitation methods? If we look at the international standard ISO 24516, it refers to the definition of the European standard EN 16323. And there it says for the term replacement, construction of a new drain or sewer on or off the line of an existing drain or sewer, the function of the new drain or sewer incorporating that of the old. In other words, it is replacement of an existing pipe by laying a new one. And how and where the new pipe is laid is irrelevant. What is decisive is that the function of an old pipeline is taken over by the new pipeline. And that is exactly the difference to new construction. With new construction, a new function is created. For example, a new residential area is connected to the network. In the case of replacement, the function already existed before. And that brings us to the second point. What are the basic methods or techniques for replacing sewers and pipelines? Now with replacement, there are basically two options, just as with new construction. Number one, the open cut method, and number two, the trenches method. The open cut method corresponds technically to a large extent to the open cut in new construction, but of course this time we are working on the existing system. And there may still be other pipelines underground that we must not damage. The trenchless methods also include methods that we already know from new construction. For example, the pipe eating method. This is similar to micro tunneling. That means the soil with the old pipe is removed at the working phase and the new pipe is driven into this cavity. In the pipe extraction method, the old pipe is pushed out by a thrust head and the new pipe is pulled in directly behind. In both cases, that, that is important, the old pipe is removed. Another method is pipe bursting. This method, however, is different. Here, the old pipe is destroyed and remains in the soil. As an example of replacement, let's now take a closer look at the pipe bursting method. Here we see a schematic view of the bursting process. In this process, a displacement body or bursting head is pulled through the old pipeline, destroying the old pipes in the process. Behind the bursting head, the new pipeline is pulled in directly. The pulling device for this process is located in the target manhole. Old sewer pipes that can be burst are made of vitrified clay or concrete, for example. In supply networks, old grey cast iron pipes are also suitable for the bursting process. With the bursting head, the old pipe fragments are pushed outwards and the entire cavity is expanded. Behind the bursting head, the shards of the old pipe then press back onto the new pipe. All in all, there are two loading situations. During installation, the pipes are pulled past the points of the old pipe fragments. This causes scarring on the surface. During operation, the fragments continue to press on the pipe as point loads. This leads to a bending in the pipe wall with tensile stresses on the inside. This can be critical, especially for pressure pipes. This is because the internal pressure also generates tensile stresses in the pipe wall. If these two tensile stresses that means the tensile stresses from internal pressure and the bending tensile stresses from the point load, if these overlap, then in some cases a critical tensile stress level can be reached. In consequence, the pipes may fail before the end of the intended service life. However, this case is not relevant for gravity pipelines, as they don't have such high internal pressure. In this construction site picture, we see a concrete pipe that has been broken up using the bursting method. The broken pieces lie all around the new pipeline. However, the distribution of these fragments is not always as regular as in this picture. 
Sometimes the fragments are also carried away by the bursting head and small piles of fragments are formed. In any case, however, the fragments put point loads on the pipe and when they are pulled through, scoring occurs on the new pipeline. Some manufacturers therefore provided the pipes with a special protective coating as we see in this picture. Scoring is clearly visible here, but it has damaged only the protective coating and not the actual product pipe. For quality assurance on the construction side, it is advisable to take a sample in the target pit from the pipe section that lies directly behind the bursting head. This sample has run through the entire section and so it has experienced the maximum abrasion. If no damage to the product pipe can be seen here, then the rest of the pipe string will most likely be undamaged. What happens in the soil during pipe bursting can be well described with mathematical physical models. On the top left we see the geometric relationships. The dashed line is the inner diameter of the old pipe. The bursting head now push it, pushes into the old pipe and destroys it. The pipe fragments are then pushed outwards into the soil. This movement is also called expansion. The pipes are then pulled in behind the bursting head. However, the outer diameter of the new pipes is slightly smaller than the bursting head. The difference is the so-called overcut. This overcut is important for reducing the soil stresses. In the upper right picture we see that a plastic zone forms in the soil around the pipeline due to the expansion. Further away the stresses are lower and the soil still reacts elastically. Behind the bursting head the overcut then offers the possibility for an elastic redeformation. In this way the stress level can be lowered. In the pictures below we see the results of some further stress calculations. In order to take irregular soil stresses into account, a correction factor can be used in the structural analysis. And the plastic soil stresses in the pipe surroundings were also confirmed by finite element calculations. We now know how the pipes are stressed, once by abrasion and once by bending from point loads. But how can we now test the pipes practically for these loads? Well, in this picture we see the typical test setup for an abrasion test. The pipe is pressed vertically from above by a stylus. The stylus tip has a geometry that corresponds to a typical contact point of an old pipe fragment. There are very different tips depending on whether one wants to simulate a clay, concrete or cast iron fragment. The pipe is then cyclically moved back and forth in the testing apparatus under the applied load. The number of load cycles is based on typical construction site conditions. As a result, one can then see whether the pipe of, or the protective coating are really suitable for the rough conditions of the pipe bursting process. The second test concerns the bending tensile stress from point load. In this picture we see a typical stress crack that occurred on the inside of the pipe. In the test, the pipe was placed under internal pressure and in addition, a point load was applied from the outside. As a rule, such tests are carried out as so-called creep-rupture internal pressure tests under high temperatures of approximately 80 degrees Celsius. The increase in temperature provokes a faster failure so that operating times of many years, of many years can be simulated during a few months. By the way, the internal pressure creep rupture test is the classic test for testing thermoplastics. Here we see on one example diagram how the surface life decreases at high temperatures. Plastic are also classified in this way. PE80, for example, is a high density polyethylene material that can withstand 8 megapascal tensile stress over 50 years at 20 degrees Celsius. Well, and to avoid every material test having to last 50 years, in practice, tests are carried out at higher temperature, namely 80 degrees Celsius. So the following applies. If the material can withstand the nominal stress of 8 megapascal at 80 degrees for one year, then it can be assumed that it can also do so for 50 years at 20 degrees. And this brings me to the end of this seminar session. We have seen what we mean by the term replacement, namely the replacement of an old pipeline by laying a new pipeline with the same or 
better function. The techniques include the open cut method as well as trenchless methods. And in the trenchless methods, we can remove the old pipe on the one hand or leave it underground using the bursting process on the other. With the bursting process, we have to assess very carefully what loads are acting from the soil on the old pipe's fragments and from the fragments on the new pipeline. During installation, abrasion is particularly critical and in later operation, the bending stresses from point load, especially if these are combined with tensile stresses from internal pressure. Thank you.